Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for the sixth video of my mystery history week, the penultimate video. Um, today I thought it'd be really interesting to do a different kind of history video in which we explore the history behind the origin of Halloween. As I started writing the script I actually had no idea how long this video was going to be or where the story was going to go which isn't usually how I go about writing my scripts but Hey, let's see what happens. Halloween is a big thing in Western culture. Everyone knows of the October 31st holiday, even if they don't celebrate it. Nowadays, it's a mostly capitalist holiday, I would say, mostly promoted just to sell sweets and costumes and all things spooky, but that hasn't always been the case. So let's find out why we celebrate Halloween. Um, the story I'm going to tell you today is the most commonly accepted form of how the modern celebration of Halloween came about. I'm sure different cultures have their different origin stories, but what I'm about to tell you is the furthest back it can be traced. Um, but before we get into this video, I'd like to thank Magellan TV for once again sponsoring us. Magellan TV is a documentary streaming site with hundreds of documentaries about a huge range of different topics. Honestly, for someone who watches as many documentaries as I do, it's really incredible to have this whole streaming service dedicated to documentaries. I cannot recommend Magellan TV enough. They have everything from true crime, to science, to history, to nature, and everything in between, with new programs added weekly that can be watched anywhere on your TV, laptop, and mobile. It's compatible with Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Google Play, and iOS and loads of the programs are available in 4K as well. I always like to give you a couple of documentary recommendations at the end of this, so I've got a really itchy eyebrow. <laughs> um, so the two I'm gonna recommend to you this week are Pregnant Man, the story of Thomas Beatty. Um, I remember the media's coverage of Thomas Beatty at the time that all this happened, and I was so fascinated by his story, and I was really eager to watch the documentary when I saw it on Magellan, I actually watched it like immediately. It's about Thomas Beatty, the world's first pregnant man. He was transgender, legally male, and pregnant. And it was just this huge media storm. So much hatred. I feel like it's really interesting to watch from a 2019 perspective. Obviously, transgender issues, something that's sort of on the tip of everyone's tongues at the moment, gender issues, stuff like that. Um, and it's really interesting to watch kind of from that viewpoint. Would highly, highly recommend. It's brilliant. I also have the real Joan of Arc lined up to watch tonight with some snacks in bed. Um, considering Joan of Arc is such a huge famous historical figure, I actually know nothing about her. So I'm really excited to watch the real Joan of Arc and learn a little bit about her. Maybe do a history video on her at some point. But let's get back to talking about today's history video. So Halloween's origins can actually be traced back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, which is spelt as follows. Um, it was traditionally celebrated from 31st of October to the 1st of November. The Celtic days began and ended at sunset, not midnight as we sort of celebrate days today. And bear in mind this all happened pre-Christianity. The Celts lived about 2,000 years ago in the area that is now known as Ireland and the UK. And Samhain was a festival marking the end of the summer and the harvest season and the beginning of winter, which was back then just referred to as the darker half of the year. The darker the half of the year was a time that was often associated with death and despair and it was believed by the Celts that on the night of the 31st of October the curtain between the worlds of the living and the dead became weak and that ghosts of their dead would use this night to revisit the mortal world, both the good and the evil spirit. For the most part Samhain was a celebration, families honoured their ancestors and invited their spirits back into their homes whilst attempts were made to ward off the evil spirit. The celebrations would be run by druids who would build and light huge sacred bonfires to commemorate the events. People would gather to burn crops and sacrifice animals to the Celtic deities. The Celts would wear costumes and masks, likely made from animal hides. The costumes were either to imitate the dead spirits or to disguise from the evil spirits, depending on which source you want to take on. It was probably a little bit of both. 
food, large feasts were prepared for both the living and the dead and the food for the ancestors who were obviously in no position to actually eat it would later be shared with the less well off in the communities. Some people in costumes would go door to door, often reciting verses and rhymes in exchange for food. But to illuminate their travels, they would hollow out gourds, usually turnips, and carve them out with grotesque faces to ward off the evil spirits. Once finished with, these turnips would be set out on windowsills for all to enjoy. When the celebration was over, the druids would ensure that the fire of each house was relit from the embers of the sacred bonfire in order to protect the people from evil spirits and to keep them warm over the coming months. Eventually, the Romans conquered much of the Celtic tribal lands and over the next few hundred years, many Roman celebrations assimilated into the existing Celtic festivals. They had their own ideas about how they celebrated the dead. They had their own festivals called Feralia and Lemuria. Fun fact, the animal Lima is actually named after this festival during which the Romans performed rites to exorcise any evil spirits from their homes. Lemurs were considered to be scary and unlucky, hence the name Lima. Um, Feralia was a day in late October when the Romans would traditionally commemorate the passing of their dead. It's thought that the modern day Halloween tradition of apple bobbing also comes from the Romans who celebrated Pomona, the goddess of harvest and fruit. The Romans celebrated a festival in her honour in early November each year which probably merged with Samhain and led to the game of apple bobbing. Interestingly, apples are actually really strongly associated with Halloween. There's toffee apples, candy apples, I think they're called in the USA. I mean, the USA apple cider is a very Halloween-y thing, although not so much in the UK. In the UK, cider is more of a getting drunk in the park when you're 14 kind of thing. Um, fast forward another few hundred years and Britain is invaded once again, this time by a new religion, Christianity. Um, along with the religion came the religious festivals. On May 13th, 609 AD, the Pope dedicated the Pantheon in Rome in honour of all Christian martyrs. It became a huge feast every year on the 13th of May, known as All Martyrs Day. Eventually, a different Pope, Pope Gregory III, expanded the festival to include all saints as well as martyrs, which is when it became known as All Saints Day. It was celebrated in a similar way to Samhain, with big bonfires and dressing up in costumes as saints, angels and devils. Around the same time that Pope Gregory expanded the festival to include the saints though, he actually moved the date of the celebration from May 13th to November 1st, which was the second day of Samhain. This happened at some point around the 8th century. With Christianity becoming stronger in the UK, it was thought that by doing so, by changing All Saints Day to November 1st, they could replace or assimilate the Celtic Samhain festival with a church approved celebration instead. They were basically trying to like force Samhain out and All Saints Day was a celebration instead. Eventually the All Saints Day celebration became to be known as All Hallows or All Hallowmas, derived from the Middle English word All Hallowmas, which was literally just the word for All Saints Day. The night before All Hallows Day was October 31st and that was the traditional night that Samhain would be celebrated. That became known as All Hallows Eve and eventually Halloween. The term is thought to have become commonly used after Scottish poet Robert Burns used it in his poem entitled Halloween. So we have Halloween on the 31st followed by All Saints Day on the 1st and then another celebration All Souls Day on November 2nd. All three days would collectively become known as All Hallows Tide, which was a time for honouring the saints and the dead. Samhain merged with All Hallows Eve. Churches were too poor usually to display the relics of martyred saints as the big churches would do, so parishioners would dress up as saints instead and on All Souls Day would go out souling. Mainly children and the poor would go from door to door singing and saying prayers for the dead in exchange for soul cakes, which were literally just small homemade cakes. Apparently this is a tradition that actually still takes place in parts of the world, even in parts of the UK still. So let me know if where you live on Halloween, people hand out little cakes, soul cakes.
Across All Hallows Tide, fires would be lit to guide returning souls back to the homes of their families, as well as to deflect the demons away. As Christianity became evolved, religion became evolved, so did increased fear of demons and evil spirits. The fire, in terms of today's tradition, could just be seen as the one lit jack-o'-lantern, the one lit carved pumpkin that people place outside their homes. As centuries have passed, the tradition of All Hallows' Eve have slowly morphed into what we know today. And of course, there's nowhere that celebrates Halloween today quite like the USA. So let's head over the Atlantic quickly. Um, if you watched my video last week on Salem Witch Trials, you should if you haven't, then you'll have an understanding of how the Puritans travelled over to New England from England and set up colonies there. The Puritans were the most strict of the Christians. They followed the word of the Bible to the letter and they completely rejected the devil, believing that the devil was on every corner just waiting to lure you off the path of God. So the whole idea of spirits, both good and evil, just didn't sit too well with the Puritans. They had a different understanding of spirits and said the returning souls cannot be journeying from purgatory on their way to heaven as Catholics frequently believe and assert. Instead, the so-called ghosts are thought to be in actuality evil spirits. As such, they're threatening. So the Puritans basically believed there was no such thing as a good spirit, all spirits were evil. So when the colonies first invaded the USA, Halloween was actually an extremely limited celebration. Um, they just didn't celebrate it. It was much more common in the southern colonies, which were much less Puritan, but all in all, Halloween just wasn't celebrated in Northern America for many centuries, um, which is ironic considering how huge it is over there now. That was until the mass Irish immigration in the 19th century. That's when it really began to take off. And now, nowhere quite celebrates it like the USA. It became less of a religious celebration and more of just a mainstream bit of fun, celebrated by all people of every racial, social and religious background. And now, although Halloween actually has very deep roots in Christianity, many Christians refuse to celebrate the modern version of the holiday, believing that it now focuses too much on the evil rather than the martyrs and the saints that the holiday was originally based around. I mean, they're probably correct, I don't really think Halloween is any longer considered to be a religious holiday, it's just a bit of capitalist fun. Although there are still sects of Christianity that do celebrate All Hallows Tide, it's just not Halloween. I thought I would end this video with just a little bit of a chat that could lead to some interesting comments and a bit of learning for us all down below. Um, I'm going to talk about how Halloween is traditionally celebrated in the UK or probably more specifically in England and you can all let me know in the comments how Halloween is celebrated where you're from, if you celebrate at all. Do you have any interesting traditions or celebrations? Um, to start off, in the UK, the UK just doesn't really celebrate Halloween like the USA does. It's definitely not as big, although with social media in recent years, it does seem to be getting there. A lot of USA customs do seem to be seeping across the Atlantic in recent years. Um, trick or treating, the act of knocking on people's doors in exchange for sweets, is something that only young children do here. I probably haven't been trick or treating since I was about 14 and even then that was because I was just escorting my younger sister. In my area, at least growing up, you didn't even knock on random doors either, you would only go to knock on people's doors that you knew, friends, relatives, neighbours. The general consensus is that you're only allowed to knock on someone's door is if there's a pumpkin lit outside their front door. Um, I've definitely noticed much less trick-or-treating in recent years, but that might just be because I live in a flat now and before that my family didn't really bother with pumpkins for years. Um, but growing up, all four of us and my dad would make a proper day out of going to Asda to pick the biggest pumpkin we could. Pumpkin patches weren't really a thing when I was younger, now they're getting bigger, but when I was younger you didn't go to pumpkin patch, you just went to Asda and we'd literally just spend all day just carving this pumpkin. Or at least my dad would carve it and we'd probably annoy the hell out of him. As for Halloween costumes over in the UK, we stick with purely scary costumes. You don't just dress up as anything, you dress up as something scary. And when we were growing up, my mum was a fan of sticking us all in a black bin bag and tearing up a little bit and then sticking a witch's hat on our heads before walking us around the streets for an hour. It was a very DIY witch's costume. And as far as my childhood and experience, that's pretty much all the UK Halloween tradition I can share. It just simply wasn't that big a deal over here 
when I was growing up, just a little bit of fun for kids. There's not really Halloween parties or anything like that. I tend to live my life in a bit of a constant state of Halloween. Like if I was a TV character, I would be Wednesday Adams. I have friends who literally call me Wednesday. My entire life is a little bit spooky doing what I do for a job and just my general demeanor. Um, but I do want to hear what Halloween is like around the rest of the world. What are your customs and traditions? Let me know if you like this kind of history video. I know it's a little bit different, but if you like it, maybe I'll do a similar one at Christmas time. Let me know. Um, thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and leave all of your comments and recommendations down below. And I'll see you in the next one tomorrow, last day of Mystery Week. Bye guys.